A couple of weeks ago, we were at the Golden State Warriors game, and they're one of our favorite clients. They're number one in the NBA. I think they have a good chance of winning the, the playoffs, and that means we get to go see courtside as well. This is the Players Tunnel, and one of our friends, Aaron Rumbaugh, six foot five, he plays basketball at the college level, and some of his friends are actually here sitting in the front row. And when you get this kind of access, when you are able to align what you love with a commercial interest, that's a dream job. Right, that whole follow your passion. When you're able to do something like this, where if you, you're 6'5 and you play basketball and you work for the NBA, this guy will beat me at Facebook marketing because he knows the players, he knows the teams, he knows the trades, he knows what's going on, he knows when the playoffs are. And so this is what you get. And then this is Kenny Lauer who runs marketing for the Golden State Warriors and we're hanging out underneath where the, the players and the owners are, right? Now, how do you make that apparent? Because a lot of people, they see a gap. Students see a gap between a diploma and a job. And a lot of us here as startups, we don't have any money or resources. And you can say, well, it's easy to show what you're doing here with the Golden State Warriors. See, I'm admin on this page. And say, yeah, you know, they post something, and it gets a ton of reach, and it gets a ton of comments. Guess what? You know, we post something just a few hours ago. Already 21,000 people like that. Steph Curry, right? I think he's got a good shot at winning MVP. With a little bit of manipulation on our end, we actually got him to be number one in the all-star voting ahead of LeBron. I think that's quite a feat, right? And we can talk about that later. We're not supposed to publicly, because it's like, you know, this kind of thing. We're selling jerseys, all this kind of stuff, behind the scenes, the other side of Facebook. So you see this going on, but at the same time, you might be reading Adweek or Social Fresh in, uh, inside Facebook, this kind of thing, and you see an article how the Golden State Warriors got two million clicks on a video in 24 hours with no ads. Well, how did it work? What did we do? Well, here it is, just simply, Coach Kerr and Steph having a free throw contest. Eight million reach, two million views. And a lot of people complain about the algorithm. Oh, I post stuff on Facebook, I don't get anything. It's now a paid game. They did this bait and switch where now I have to pay to reach my fans, blah, 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 use email instead. Sure, but you can combine both. It's not that one is better than the other. You have to use both. And in tandem is where you get the power. It's just like, what's the most important leg of a tripod? You need all three. You take anyone away and it falls apart, right? So we go through and we document What's going on? We document the stats. We document certain kinds of learnings. For example, gee, you should post right after the game because that's when the fans are, are most active because we have our check-in audiences. We have people tweeting. We have live media coverage on CSN. We have the San Francisco Chronicle. We're tying and retargeting. At the same time, during the game, after the game, we take people who have checked in and we sell them you know, promote season tickets. We promote, hey, here's a new uniform of Clay Thompson because we notice you like Clay Thompson. Very personalized, right? Because we're combining all the audiences. We're combining the web audiences with social, with email, right? We're combining all of those universes and you can actually tie those across. Everything I'm showing you here does not require special access. It does not require programming expertise. There's no tool to buy. This is all native. We have a tool, we're a software company, right? I'm the CTO of a software company, but I'm not here to peddle software. I'm here to show you, you can do all of this simply through checklists, all with, with native engagement, native tools where you're stepping things through a process just like you would assemble you know, an In-N-Out hamburger or assemble, assemble a Prius, right? You have a bunch of little simple steps. You step them together, time together. You can call them sequences or whatever, and then you, you have what's called, the net result is SEO. Right? What you do is content marketing, what you do is personal branding, and the net result is sales. Right? It's not that you, you know, sorry Chris Boggs, he's chairman of Simpo, uh, he might disagree with me, but I, I think that things like ranking in Google or the kind of outputs are, are a result of having done these various things that relate to personal branding. If you start with the core of what you really stand for, what you mean, right? I heard someone else say earlier that Mark Twain said the key to success is to be genuine. Fake that and you got it made. So how do you do you have, then you have, don't you have to start with what really matters to you, right? So when you have someone who's writing passionately about how the Warriors are winning, and then we quote Kevin Cote, who as of now still runs digital at the Warriors. By the way, he's going to Facebook to manage all the professional sports teams and guess who's, who he's bringing along for that, right? Who's, who's he gonna refer to run their Facebook ad campaigns, right? So when you uplift other people, Instead of promoting yourself, that's the ultimate word of mouth. It's where, and when we think about social media, it's not that I'm a social media expert or some nonsense like that. That means nothing. It's about getting other people to talk about you, right? Because I could tell you, hey, you know, I think that uh, this place is the best restaurant to eat at, but, you know, Joe is here in Fort Lauderdale, and he can say, actually, it's this place, and you would trust him because he's a friend of yours, and you don't know who I am. I'm just some guy, right? So what you've got to do is create something called implied endorsement. An implied endorsement is when you get other people to write about you 
so that, for example, we speak at the Marketo conference or the Infusionsoft conference if you're a customer of one of those tools. And what do they say on stage? Here's the checklist on how you're going to do things. Everything here that I'm talking about is all checklists. You might hear me say checklist like 50 times, right, in the next 40 minutes. Now, give me an, I'll give you an example of, of micro, micro targeting that can be based on checklists that anybody should be able to follow. So I wrote this blog post just for fun. Uber nearly kills me, charges me 178 bucks too, right? And so we were on our way. <laughs> it's a good headline, right? I didn't split test it. And so after the Warriors game, we had several days of meetings with Facebook. And you have to sign some pretty heavy NDAs because we know what their roadmap looks like. We know what they're building and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I think it's pretty obvious if you were to think about it. You know what they're trying to build. So I wrote this blog post. And I, put, I have multiple blogs that I, I'll post this on, and I'll show you how that works in just a minute. And not that we need to go into the details of how it worked, but basically this Uber driver was, did a horrible job. I had to get out of that cab and then take another cab and almost missed our series of meetings with Facebook. And I, I asked Uber what's going on. I don't know if you can read that. And it says, I'm sure you can understand that, that we're not responsible for these Uber drivers because they're, they're not employees of ours. We just pay them. We're just a technology tool. So if something bad happens, that's on you. And besides, we already paid the driver, so we're not going to do anything. And I said, really, are you sure? So what, what if you go, you know, is, is that the same as saying you go on a date with Match.com or, or you, you buy something on Craigslist and is Craigslist or Match.com responsible? Or what's the difference? How does this whole crowdsourcing thing? What if you go to stay at some pl someplace on Airbnb? Like who's liable, right? The consumer's trusting the brand. What does that really mean, right? Who cares? We can talk about the issues. People can debate. But here's what's important. I took this blog post and I put it into Facebook. And you know with the, the new ads-driven objectives, there's 10 objectives that you can choose on Facebook. This goes back to what we call the dollar a day Facebook strategy. Everyone should be spending a dollar a day if you have good content. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shiitake. But you still need good content, right? So I took this article and I happened to take their CEO's face and put it there. And I tried to find a face where it looked like he was worried about something, right? And then who did I target? Let's see. People who work at Uber, who work at Benchmark Capital and Kleiner Perkins, people who work at the San Francisco Chronicle, people who work at you know, the FTC, Red Ventures, uh, anyone that's related, that's influential in this space, whoever put money into them, uh, their competitors, Lyft, right, I targeted them, all of this. Now, how big is this audience? A couple thousand, right? It's really small. I spent a few dollars. Now, remember, I let this thing continue for about a week and a half, and I intentionally waited to write this blog post. A, because I wanted to give them enough time to cure the issue instead of just, you know, pounding them. And B, I wanted to actually show you guys this as a case study to show you how it would actually work, right? And I've seen other people use this for customer abuse. Some people call this, you know, social CRM or VRM, vendor relationship management, which is the, the customer fighting back. That's a whole other topic. Actually, there's a whole conference that Greg Sterling puts on about that. It's, it's not that you're using social media amplification to get your way or basically to cut the line. It's that you as a marketer can use it for any kind of purpose that you want because if you realize that it's an influence the influencer strategy where the people that are seeing this don't realize that it's just them, then you can look as big as you want to anybody. And that's what we've known has worked on Facebook since about 2009 or so. And we've done this hundreds of times. It works like a charm. Who's done this? Like the workplace targeting, just out of curiosity. Does it work? Have you tried it? Do you even want to admit that you do this? Comcast. Oh, that's an easy target, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So think about if you wanted to reach anybody you wanted to, if you wanted to speak at a conference, if you wanted to be featured in a magazine, who has the most trust? Let's say you're, you're an accountant. Well, then what if you were able to get Arthur Anderson or whoever, like whoever's like the most trusted to get the implied endorsement to talk about you? What do you do? Well, not just from an SEO standpoint, oh, I'm going to try to get them to link to me. No, no, no. What you do is you give them content and they link to you. So we write these articles, right? So you see there's an article like this. And what do we do inside here? We link to all the other blog posts that we have. Not for SEO purposes. No. So here this is linking to FBPPC. And then you may see that, you know, on Adweek, I've got tons and tons of articles that are coming out here, right? On and on and on and on. And what do these things do? What do these articles do? They link back to all the other concepts that we're talking about. This goes back up into your content pyramid, so the thing you stand for, you know, the whole Simon Sinek start with why, everything boils up into the why. You have the why, 
You have the how and you have the what. And that's what our nine triangles are. I'll go into that in just a second, right? The nine triangles, of, you have to start with the why. You have a bunch of concepts, which is the how, and you have the what, which is tactically what you're doing, right? So if all the content that you're producing about micro little topics and tactics on how we do certain things roll up into, into larger concepts and frameworks and rolls up into your why, everything is, makes sense, not because you're trying to rank all the way up for a key word that represents everything else that you're writing about topically, but because that's the kind of thing that will cause other people to join the bandwagon and join your cause and believe in what you're doing and that level of authenticity that we're talking about, right? So to make that strategy work, you need to employ lots of people creating content. Because last I checked, none of us have extra time, right? The fact that we came here and spent a whole day is a huge investment of time. So you've got to get your customers, you've got to get other authorities, you've got to get other people to talk about you. So it actually makes sense for us to have folks at Facebook talk about us and release case studies, right? Zuckerberg mentioned us in the keynote a couple weeks ago, the stuff that we were working on. That's fantastic. There are other people that they, they have more power working at Marketo than they would if they were to come work for us because you see they carry more influence authority working at that organization. So if you've got a Cold War mentality mindset, you want everyone to come work for you because you want to own the universe, but rather decide if they have more influence where they are and then you can find out a relationship where you're elevating them. You act like a PR agent, right? So you could have Leah Fine and she could be your PR person and, and, and but imagine you're, you know, if they're a client, don't think of them as a client because that's like a target, right? The whole idea of advertising is you're, you're trying to like take people's money and salespeople are beating you down, cold calling, that kind of, that's not that. It's that you're taking people who are experts in your area, you have no competitors, a blue ocean strategy, whatever, right? And you're trying to lift people up. And while you're doing that, what happens? They create blog posts that demonstrate the concept. So for example, this is how do you create save target audiences in Facebook? Does anyone know how to do that? Maybe, maybe not, right? Why is that important? Well, you don't know why. You don't have context why. The reason why is that if you create groups of people that you want to hit, different personas, segmentation of the people that you want to hit, and you tie it with different content that you have, then you can create evergreen sequences, just like you would in your marketing automation. Just like you would in, if you're just using, you know, email, constant contact, that kind of thing, right? That's why it's important. You're basically automating. You're, it's like the direct mail principles. Right? And when you're, you're doing list segmentation, deciding where you're going to cut off the list and who you're going to mail deep to, it's the same thing in social. The same sort of precision where you have a scalpel instead of a sledgehammer, which is what a lot of people are doing. Oh, I have 78,000 followers, or I think something like that on, on Twitter, and I have like 50,000 people following me on Facebook. I don't care. That doesn't matter. What matters is the influence, and I'll take quality over quantity any day. We've got, lot, we've got a lot of people that are writing content, and it all rolls up, and it all links to one another then you start to have some real power. So we have students in our system that are writing content. And one of our guys, Vitaly, he's in the front row, and he's, we just encourage everybody to, to write content. This is a blog generator. If you're an engineer, then I, I'll give you the code if you want. It generates WordPress here. I can come here and generate WordPress blogs, right? And here it is, and here's a blog that he wrote. Failure is the ultimate success. So, you know, fail fast, keep trying, iterate quickly, learn from your mistakes, you know, this sort of thing. Showing examples, that's great. Now that rolls up into some of the other concepts that we like to talk about, related to iteration, related to testing, related, see, all the content rolls up if you do this. If you can, can power other people to help produce your content, it's not that they're ghostwriting, it's not that you're paying people in India five bucks an hour, it's not one of those, um, the, you know those content farms and networks and spinning content and all SEO. I'm not saying doing any of that. I'm saying you're doing, doing it authentically because you're, you're rolling up the best content. You've, you've attracted other people that believe in the same thing you do topically, right? Starting with that why, the, the bees that are attracting honey, right? And they become your ambassadors. And when you support them, kind of the law of reciprocity, you're paying it forward, you, give, you get back a multiple of that. I'm going to start closing some tabs here because there's too many tabs open. This has got a low resolution thing here. Okay, so this is our content strategy. I hope you can see this. We've actually got it in a, in a nice diagram, but I, I like it this way because this was a hand-drawn, you know, at the restaurant at midnight, came up with the idea kind of thing a few years ago. So I hope you can see this. Uh, where is the, is there a little thing with the pointer with the red thing? Can I do this? Okay, so follow along because this is the, this is the heart of the presentation in terms of mechanically how things get executed. We're producing a lot of content. The content is driven as a result of the execution, 
right? Every time we complete a project, every time we do something, like even here, right, where uh, Vasil is video recording this. This is going to turn into content that we're going to chop up in the blog post, chop up in the podcast, chop up into different things that we may go back in and edit old articles. But it's based on, you know, these articles are based on execution of checklist items, of our process, of the DNA, of how we do stuff, of the standard operating procedures. If you think about uh, McDonald's, what makes them amazing is the french fries are the same. They're consistent. They're amazing. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't, and the 18-year-old teenage, teenager is not paying attention, but it's still consistently good because they have processes, checklists, not the negative connotation of bureaucracy, but what actually drives power is repeatable excellence. Checklists equal repeatable excellence. If you do not, do not have a checklist for how you operate your business, you are not going to have repeatable results. You might one time you know, do something good, and then next time it doesn't work, and then you wonder why. You have inefficiency. You need checklists that govern everything you do. This is the heart of your business. It is the DNA of your why. It goes all the way down to the what, right? The what to the how to the why. It supports it. the layers in this pyramid. Not a pyramid scheme, right? But a, a pyramid that gives you multiplying power. So when we have these checklists and we write articles that are based on execution over and over and over, it doesn't matter if it's the Warriors or Brown Foreman or the local dentist or a restaurant. It does, a lot of people say, oh, this only works in media and entertainment. No, this absolutely works in B2B. B2B is actually better. Startups, it's actually better, right? Provided that you have good content. If you don't have any content, then everything else doesn't work. So if you've got these checklists and you're executing against them over and over, you're sharing your content, other people are also contributing a voice in unison, believing in what you're saying, you're coining terms even, or you're promoting their stuff and they promote your stuff, because of course, when you scratch someone's back, what do they do? They say thank you, right? You write an article saying, here, I'll just show you, right? You write an amazing article praising somebody, like here's one. Here's my buddy, he, he has a social tool that does apps and stuff like that. Nathan Latka is the James Bond of startup founders. And so I tell the story, you know, it was four or five years ago, and this guy, you know, he dresses like this because his customers are mostly cougars, and he just knows that, so, you know, you use it. If you got it, flaunt it. And I just go on and on and show how this guy is a scrappy entrepreneur, and I give example after example. Here he is with George Bush, right, about how he does what he does. He is so good at live selling, this guy. If he was here, you would all open your wallet. If me, I'll, I'll just end up confusing you. But he will open your wallet. You will pay him. You will just will not get enough of him, right? And ha here's how he does it, right? Here, here's his schedule. He's got a checklist. He's got a system how he manages his time. He's got a system for you know, even what he eats. He treats his, machine, you know, his body like a machine. He has a way that he sets up webinars and his step-by-step -step process on the messages that he sends and, and the way he does his pitch and the way he organizes everything, fantastic. So highlighting him, right? Nowhere here did it say, Dennis Yu is good at social media or some nonsense like that. Highlighted him. So what do you think happens when he sees this? First, right, he's tickled. Wow, this is really cool. Second, I'm going to show this to my investors because, of course, you're going to want to show, or show it to your boss or show it to your friend. Oh, cool. Check this out. This is really cool, isn't it? Right? Awesome. And then you're going to promote it. And if they're using our principles of using a dollar a day to amplify, just like you'd amplify to Uber employees, or you can positive amplify. It doesn't have to be negative, right? You amplify it. Then they have basically become your marketing team better than you ever could if you were to pay them. You see how this works? You see how this reciprocity works? This is what I'm talking about. This is what you've got to learn to embrace, and it turns content marketing upside down. It turns traditional SEO upside down to what true SEO is, which is about getting content that deserves to rank, that really should be shared, not because you're trying to trick Google or you know, do some weird things on your website. That, I mean, nothing wrong with like fixing your website, right? Making it run faster and mobile and all this HTTPS, all that stuff, right? But getting content that deserves to, to win. So we have admin on these sites and others by topic. So SEMA, for example, which is the big auto industry, 150,000 people in Vegas, right? So we speak and we blog at SEMA. And we share content related to how you can do this if you're in the auto industry, or if you're in Fusionsoft, or you're reading Social Fresh, or like whatever it is, right? If you're a small business and you use Infusionsoft, then we write blogs about here's how Infusionsoft customers can apply goals content targeting. Here's how they can apply our checklist. It's the same checklist, just different examples, different execution all the way through. And so these checklists, this is where most people get stuck. These checklists you must publish. You can't hide them. You can't charge for them. Oh, but that's our secret. Then these guys will compete against us. Now we don't have anything. If we just give away all our stuff, like, 
No, no. What actually happens when you give out these checklists, and if you want our checklists, text like to 96,000. So 96,000, text the word like. And if it doesn't work, then email me. Because I just set this up a few minutes ago. I wasn't paying attention, maybe. So you give out these checklists, and then they're going to learn how to get it, right? They're going to come to this page, or whatever it is, landing page could be mobile optimized, and then they're going to hear, you know, blah, 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 blah. You have, a, you have a, a cougar worthy sort of guy here talking about our stuff. And here, download the guy, get the checklist, get information, or just put in your credit card right now and just we'll go ahead and you know, charge your credit card, right? So everything is driven by a process. And then you have the endorsements of, not because you're just putting logos of other people down the side here, but because they came, they, the, the thing that, that brought them to the landing page was the fact that they saw your article, right? And that's what ties into a content marketing process. It's not that you ran Google AdWords, because who trusts that? When you run things like Facebook ads, or you can do the same kind of workplace targeting on Twitter and LinkedIn, sort of. When you, it sounds crazy, but you're gonna drive traffic to other people's sites. Well, why would I drive traffic to the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times? Because that's where we have the article, silly, you know? That, that's where we, we've got, uh, you know, here's our article in the LA Times where is Facebook worth it? Well, according to, you know, Dennis, he, he said, here's some stats that he gave and, you know, well, blah, 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 here's some stats. We're driving traffic to the LA Times. So when people see this, who do they think is advertising? And they don't even think it's advertising, right? They think, oh, wow, here's a cool LA Times article and half, it, half of it's our research. And so when they see that, and we, we make sure people who work at the Wall Street Journal and Forrester and like whoever, right, think about who the people are that you want to influence. Then uh, we, you know, make sure people who work at Gannett or USA Today, they see this. And then they, they had to do, uh, Laura Mandaro, who's the West Coast editor of the USA Today, she had to do an article on what's going on with uh, Ice Bucket and and Ferguson, right? You know, wh why is there not racism going on on Facebook versus why is Facebook all like ice bucket, you know, people dumping buckets? And why, why is it different, right? Why, why did Twitter erupt with all this, you know, black racism stuff? And they came to us, you know, they came to Alex, we gave them all these stats, and they did this at the request, or we did this at the request of USA Today, right? That's the ultimate inbound. It wasn't that we said for immediate release, you know, here's something you need to pick it up where, you know, you're constantly blasting the PR and journalist people. No, they came to us. Why? Because those, that narrow audience of 10,000 journalists have seen our content over the last five or six years. So when you're an established authority and you have content that lives across all these different places, then you can continue, you get this momentum, right? The more content you're able to generate, third party content, you can put content on your site too, but the third party content is the stuff that makes the most sense. It has the highest cred. So then they come and they see these checklists and you guys will come in and look at our checklists. You may, you might find they're good, you may get started, and then you don't wanna do it, so you buy a quick start package with us. And the quick start packages are implemented by students who go through our certification program, right? And that's how we create jobs for students. That's what we stand for. And the more we see people go through this, the more we need to automate, which is where I come in on the software, right? I'm in charge of our engineering team building all this software. And so that's how you go from content all the way to software. If you're a software company, you actually are a content company. And it's not that you're an engineer. It doesn't matter how good your PHP skills are. It's how good your content skills are because you are always producing content. Every opportunity is a content production opportunity. You need to be thinking about that. And so your personal brand is always at stake. Even a big insurance company, right? They're appreciating customers, giving out hot dogs, filling up people's gasoline tanks, presenting big checks, making people cry, right? You're always doing these things. Personal branding. So how do you do this? Well, first, who are the people that you love? So if we love Aaron Kalo or Chris Boggs or Vasile, we have dollar bills with their faces on them. If you want one, come up afterwards, I'll give you one of these, right? And so this is what we call client love. And we give fun things, we use Amazon Prime, and we deliver all sorts of, see this is what happens, I'm using the HubSpot little sidekick thing, I use all kinds of tools. That's a whole other presentation. Oh, look, Golden State Warriors are giving us money. Isn't that nice? So here's a whole process, you can use Fiverr, you can repeat these things, you can have these students do this for you, and example after example, all checklists, right? Simple, gift strategy, 
go creep on their LinkedIn and Facebook and see what they like and give them something that shows that you actually were thinking about it, right? Oh man, email's popping up like crazy. Oh, Rosetta Stone, they're our favorite feature customer, right? And, and so when you do this, people love you because you're creating videos, you're wishing them happy birthday, you can use like fancy hands to call them and wish them happy birthday, right? These kinds of things, it's Brian Eisenberg's birthday today, right? So when you elevate other people and you find ways to delight them, beyond email, but physical things, man. Amazon Prime, eight or nine bucks, you can send a thing of like candy or whatever and, and say, like I like to send mints, for example, and I'll say like, I meant to tell you how, how awesome you were. Right? And they love that. And what do they do? They post on social media, then we take that and then we amplify it again. So you're, con you're taking this momentum and you're reamplifying it across. This is called the client love process. And checklist, checklist, checklist. You get the picture now? Okay. Checklist on your dollar a day Facebook ad strategy. Anytime you have a good piece of content, you're going to spend a dollar a day because a dollar lets you reach 200 micro targeted people by job title, by company they work at, by income, by, you know, whatever, by your email list, because you're importing that as a website custom audience or email custom audience, right? Facebook's all about custom audiences, right? And so you take this, and, you know, here's Lauren Baker, here we are at LinkedIn, and so we interview the guy in charge of content marketing at LinkedIn, and we say, hey, you know, and he endorses our way of doing content marketing, because it fits into our frameworks. Why not? Right? So checklists, all these checklists that you want to do. And then you have these kids, students, that are passionate customers or believe in what you're doing or you corral your son into doing this thing and then they, they believe in this. So this all ties to, to two things. We call this the nine triangles. And the first one's why, it's what you stand for, right? It's the triad of analysts, businesses, partners. It's the students with the businesses and the schools. The three middle triangles are the ones that matter the most to you. Those are the marketing triangles that generate traffic. Iteration is metrics analysis action. The funnel is audience engagement to conversion. Right? Business strategy is goals, content, to targeting, right? And there's steps behind how you do each of these. And then, of course, you know, how do you organize, do delegate, delete, manage your email, right? So if you've got all of these in order, then you have an endless supply of kids that otherwise are working in retail for eight bucks an hour because they don't have their degree yet. They're intelligent. They use and love your products. It works in B2B too, a little tougher. You have businesses. You're a business. Maybe you're an agency, right? And it's easy to put this together. And so you combine all of these, right? We talked about the funnel, or you talk about IDA. It's the same thing. You're driving people down the funnel because you have sequences all the way down. Sequences where if they hit this bucket, you send them this, right? Just like you have an email, those sequences apply to everything else that you're doing. And then if you want to do some growth hacking, we have that workshop tomorrow, of course. The seal will tell you about. And these 30 items, this is the checklist that you're going to need to make your startup really blossom, or if you're doing any kind of growth marketing, this is the dollar a day strategy. You need the plumbing in place, right? The whole idea of a setup checklist is you need conversion tracking and your Google ads and every, all your content marketing, right? Your CMS and your CRM together. You need to have goals. You need to know what each of these things are, are worth at each stage in the funnel. And then at each stage in the funnel, you need to have content. You need to tie these, this content to different audiences called targeting, which are based on personas, right? A persona is a path that a particular segment goes down, and you feed them content all the way down the funnel. Then you create look-alike audiences, which is a Facebook kind of thing, but this is not a Facebook-only strategy, right? There are videos and articles and whatever that go back to each of these. Why? Because as we've been executing, we produce articles which then roll back into this. So every article we're writing is not only uplifting the head of social media at Rosetta Stone, but also marketing for us at the same time and creating software and creating processes and we keep tuning these processes as rough as they are because then you're going to amplify it. You're going to amplify it a dollar a day to these strategies. You can do this. This is not difficult. Don't tell me how busy you are. Don't tell me how complicated this is. You can do this because these two kids in the front row can do this and I guarantee you they're younger than everyone else here. And then you're going to optimize. Why? Because you're going to throw fuel on the fire. The things that are working, you're going to recycle. They're going to be evergreen. Then you don't have to be, oh, I've got to produce this one piece of content every week. Well, that's ridiculous. You might as well roll balls up hills like Sisyphus, right? You want to try to make this thing where you have evergreen sequences. What do I got, like two minutes? Oh, look, Black History Month. See? Lots of shares. YouTube still dominates in video. Facebook has more shares. Oh, there's my... Hold on a minute here. I'm going to go back to Chrome. We can, oh, let me show you how much time. Wrap up. Okay. Another example of micro-targeting. Kale Tyson. He's trying to raise money for his Indiegogo. There's a whole video, which is great. But we did some targeting here, and we spent 70 bucks targeting folks 
who work at Rolling Stone magazine, who work at the Grand Ole Opry, who work at uh, you know the National Country Hall of Fame, whatever, right? We have Fiverr do things like write, write songs and promote. We have fancy hands do things like schedule meetings. We tie these things into sequences that sit inside Infusionsoft, right? So if whatever you're doing in Infusionsoft, you can have the same things mirrored into social because you can match your emails to Facebook. And all the while, you're producing content. The content generates checklists because it's proving that your checklists are worthy. It's proving your why that it's meaningful. And it's lifting up the personal brand of all of you. You're lifting up your customers. You're lifting, you don't, don't talk about me. I'm just tech support, right? I'm the servant leader. Instead of at the top of the pyramid, I sit at the bottom. I serve everybody, right? And that's the way you want to see it because when you lift up other people in social media, they can't help because they love having their egos rubbed. This is how you do it, right? Checklist behind all of this. Uh, hope you guys like it. We'll stay around and answer any questions you want. Free money too, if you want that. So this, this will reinforce the dollar a day Facebook strategy. You got a good piece of content, you want to put a dollar a day against it. And if the click through rate's low, the engagement rate's low, or quality score's low, that means your content audience sucks. So th this is how you tell, okay? Thank you very much to Dennis. Appreciate it.